Good afternoon everyone. In today's video, I will be making a basic table and a basic piece of furniture that can uh, change uh, its width, depth and height. And this table also can or actually allow you to change the top uh, thickness of it and the leg uh, width. This video is uh, coming as a response to one of my subscriber L uh, asking actually to make a simple table furniture that allow us to control a couple of uh, parameters including the geometry one and the material one I will try my best in this video to focus on the geometry one and I will do my best to make in the second video the other requirement so I as you can see I just uh, actually frozen or uh, uh, turn off the preview of everything and I will even turn off the review with a preview of the legs and the uh, top of the table and start from scratch to show you how to do it it's very basic and very easy simply just i need four points uh, they are just point by coordinates and the first one i just left without any input and i rename it to be uh, the origin and it's as you can see here in the background it's the point where you have your zero zero coordination and then I defined a new sliders, uh, that's the width slider and depth slider, they are numerical slider and I set up the minimum and the maximum uh, 0 and 1 and the steps to 0 0.05 and the same thing for the width and I connect them to the first point which uh, if you have a look it's here uh, at the top left part of the screen and it have only one 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 value or one parameter fed to its x which is the width would that make sense that can control actually uh you know the depth the distance between it and the origin uh or because every, every point is actually should be set to the origin because if you remove everything it'll go to zero zero so distance in x is one uh the second point uh, in here is uh, at the top corner and it have both X and Y uh, X is goes for the width Y goes for the depth value or it's a good idea always to flex what you've done and keep changing those values uh, you know like 1.2 and see if they are corresponding normally prior you going to more complicated modeling I see lots of my students actually, uh, you know, keep continuing modeling without flexing. And trust me, it's the worst thing to do. And the simpler the modeling or the simpler the geometry is and you flex and check your work, it's easier to find any mistake from the beginning and it's also easier to fix the errors. Now, the fourth point is actually have only the Y which has been uh, connected to the depth so anyway the first one have nothing the second one only x which is the width the third one here which is have x and y connected to width and depth and the fourth one is at the top left part which is have only the depth connected to y now what i need to do is to connect them all together to a one list so you can actually make you know one two three four uh, point as a group uh, in this case it might be a good idea to get back and turn them off uh, because you're already seeing uh, their copies this is just taking a copies of them and deal with them as a list instead of an in four individuals and this will allow of course the tabletop here and it's just that um, just uh, just we move them up just a move command a geometry don't translate the va the geometry is connected to the list itself while the z value is connected to the table height as you can see which is also set to 0.6 now that's well done now we have to create a polygon you can create uh, you can create actually um, a rectangle by corner points which I'm going to use in the next uh, step. So this is the rectangle, and then you can go ahead and make an exit route as a solid. And of course, I'm making preview in here. By making the geometry, which is, um, that's the solid, it takes the curve out of the, po uh, the polygon point. So I, I don't need that anymore. I'll just turn it off. And it need a direction and it need a distance. 
and of course the direction is as a default is a positive up which is the vector positive z axis and i can control with the distance itself i can control the uh, uh, the orientation so if i if i want i can just feed the uh, positive value of the uh, of the thickness this one this specific amount of an extrusion it's called by the distance and i'm controlling it by a negative value of something let me see let me show you what is it which is indeed the parameter that control the table thickness as you can see here so it's 0.1 positive and i will multiply it by minus one so it will be negative here the value uh, the, the sign is actually uh, determine the direction so it's up if it's positive and if it's down it will be negative and i want it to go down instead of up uh, there is lots of way to do that. You can make, uh, you can actually here, you can connect, keep it positive, give it to the distance and control, uh, because you're going to give Z axis and control uh, vector dot reverse. So you can get downward and you connected that to the direction. Uh, you, you have a third way, which is actually to get the height of it, which is instead here, to make the Z location is A minus uh, B, which is again A, the overall uh, table length minus the B, which is the table thickness and fed it directly without all that headache. So depend on how you want to model it. You know, there's more than like three or four ways to do that. This one is one of them. And now we have this top uh, top table or uh, the top of the table. Yep, yeah, sorry, the top of table geometry. I will turn off those points. I don't think we need them anymore. It's easier for uh, Dynamo to navigate if you uh, participate in turning off some of the unrequired geometries. That's how I feel it. Now, at the bottom part of it, I am again uh, copying the points here to make the first leg. Let me see what I'm doing here. So let me preview this one. And as you can see, yes, exactly that's what I'm doing. I'm taking the geometry, which is the origin, and push it toward the x axis and the x in this case is the width uh, the leg width which is uh, the same actually as the leg depth so it's pushing this point that way by 0.1 same technique that i use at the top is exactly used here uh, and i'm going to preview that one and you're going to see it's located up and again the geometry i'm feeding here is the same origin point at the beginning and the x and y are actually the same leg uh, width because the leg width in this table is the same as uh, the leg depth. Uh, the third one is almost the same technique, uh, but it get it uh, the leg width. Uh, it just got it to the to the y translation, so it will be pushed from the origin toward the top. So we have three points, and the fourth one, my dear friends will be the origin itself. So I'm going to create a list or a group, which is those four, if I'm, if I'm going to select them. Yeah, and now you see it's a bluish here. It's just getting blue. You can see here. So those four points actually are uh, one, two, three, or actually two, three, four. And number one is the origin, which is the, this one here. So we have now copies of all those four points. So we absolutely have no need to double, uh, you know, to double those points right here. So I'll just turn them off. And again, I can just go ahead, use here corner by, sorry, rectangle by corner points. Uh, and it, you can use polygon by points if you want. It's totally up to you, which I did in the top part of the table. Now I have those, uh, you know, that's rectangle created by, depending on those points, I can go ahead and let's see. I'm not going to make exit road, but rather I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, preview. I'm going to make a copy here for this one. So I'm going to take that rectangle and push it toward or push it in the X axis. The X axis is A minus B, where A is the width itself. So you are pushing this point all the way to here minus, you know, minus the leg uh, width, of course. So it's a very basic formula, my friends. If you want to test it, 
uh, if you want to do something else, if you're just saying no, we just need to, we just need to take the width. Look what's gonna happen if you just push it on the x-axis. Okay, what did I miss? I made a mess. Am I? Okay, I'll do. Yep. So it's uh, a minus b. If I just make a, which is how much? Oh, just, just, I can just carry on with the width value straight like this without a minus b because b is not defined. I should remove b from here. Anyway, clumsy me. So look at what we have. If you just push in the direction of x because, or the direct, direction of width, because this is this point and that's the pure x distance or width distance which is need to be minus the overall leg width this is what I've done a minus b and you got your work beautifully done when you do that so I'm gonna delete this one and the th that's the first that's the second the third will be following the same technique but in both x and y so uh, the x uh, you see the x is uh, the same as this and we have y value which is again taking a minus b so a in this case will be the the width the depth sorry of the table from here to here also minus the leg uh, width or depth which is the same if you want to make them separate so you allow leg depth and another value for leg width in, in this case you have to separate them and connect each to its correspondent now the last one, and maybe you're still noticing that each time I activate, you will see an old location for the rectangle and it jump because Dynamo somehow stored the old location before I flex the table was 0.8 by 0.8 and now I flex them in front of you to 1 by 1. Uh, this is still some issues in Dynamo anyway uh, with the refreshing and automatic refreshing. The way it's uh, turned on the visualization, let me show you. You see it will jump. Yep. Yep, that, that's what happened. So don't freak out. Nothing, uh, nothing wrong. That's normal so far. They should have been fixing it by now, but we're still waiting for, um, you know, uh, more updated uh, versions. Uh, now this dude is here just to take a copies of all uh, those four rectangles. And again, if you notice, it stored the old location of them. So it might be a good idea to get rid of those doubles as we don't need them anymore i'm just on and off just for you to follow step by step what's going to happen in the geometry now these or this group will be fed as a curve dot exit road and again the distance is a minus b a in this case is the overall height of the table from this point to the top minus the thickness of the top table so a is the overall height and the b is the table top thickness so and that's it so just highlight this one and everyone will be happy that the example will be uh, finished and probably there is no need for that it's uh, really a good idea to keep it flexing as i said now we need to zoom out a bit and then we zoom into this one let's have a look uh, let's flex so uh let's make it maybe two the width and you can see it's uh work perfectly and i can go ahead and change the width to 1.5 the depth to 1.5 and uh, you can even make it 0.5 it's up to you but don't you know over flex and if you get to get a smaller value than the overall possible okay uh you will see uh let me go back to 0.5 maybe. If you let let test it and break it down, let's make it uh, 0.4 maybe. Uh, again, 0.3. Okay, now 0.2. And now we start to get crazy results, of course, 0.1. And we get almost nothing. Uh, I, I, I have this concept already to, to try to fix this type of error. I explain these topics in uh, in my book. Uh, that uh, you can you can have a look at it or buy it. I mean, on Amazon, uh, it's uh, Revit uh, Parametric Design, uh, Revit Families for Beginners. Uh, I show lots of advanced way to control such a cases. Yes, I was talking about it in pure Revit uh, for, uh, Revit uh, Family Design platform. 
uh, but the same technologies can be you know used in a dynamo to avoid such a uh, uh, such a crashes by you know controlling the minimum and the maximum depth uh, parameter here and there is two techniques there is a basic flexing techniques and there's advanced flexing techniques but anyway uh, all targeting you know not to get the user or preventing the user from getting incorrect value and what do we have to do as or how we can program the, the dynamo to get much more smarter to prevent the user himself or herself from giving any correct values uh, what else uh, table thickness so probably 0.05 let's go back to the topic we are in and the leg thickness is 0.05 so uh, i i do wish that this video covered the question and also for those who are interested in basic uh, modeling uh, this is how we make a very basic furniture table uh, uh, in dynamo i will try my best in the next video to post related to uh, you know uh, changing its material as per requested in the uh, comment thank you very much for watching and have a good day